here it goes. Blacked out GW1000 triple sensor mud master versus blacked out GG-B100 quad sensor mud master. Carbon versus resin, solar versus battery, Bluetooth versus wave scepter, bigger versus smaller, thicker versus less thicker, and there's a B just flying. I have no idea where that comes from, but move along, move along. Anyway. 88,000 Japanese yen versus 49,000 Japanese yen. Brand new. 200 bucks use conditions versus 380 bucks use conditions. So they are pretty much affordable today. Those are the big difference that I'm sure everybody already knows about. But what else? And today, I'm going to talk about those. Starting with the crystal. Sapphire versus mineral. No big deal. But this one has anti-reflective coating, whereas this one is not meaning. This one is much more pleasing to the eye. The clarity is much better. Not a deal breaker, but something different in comparison to this one, which looks a little bit dull. That's it. This one also has scratch resistance since it is a fire, whereas this one is not. Mineral is said to be tougher, but when both of these were subjected to a strong force, obviously both will break regardless. Plus, everybody is okay with mineral crystal because they are still somewhat scratch resistance until you scratch yours and then you'll notice of how important it is to have a fire instead there's number one number two is beeping sound both of them operate on piezoelectric speaker but if i were to push the buttons between mode you can hear that i see now the beeping sound on this gwg1000 triple sensor model is not as loud as those on this quad sensor model even when it only has singular backplate in metal Whereas on this GGB100, we'll have metal underneath and covered with resin as well. I don't know what's going on in there, but regardless, the beeping sound on this GGB100 is better. This could help with user experience if you use the timer and alarm and all those things. Next is LED light. So this is a big deal as well. Both of them has singular LED light for the analog portions and singular LED light for the digital portions. Both are placed at the exact same location, same LED light, same afterglow, same auto light, but the GGB100 backlight is much brighter in comparison to this GWG1000 backlight. I don't know why, but still, there's something different, but keep note that they will work perfectly at night time, no problem. The loom on this Two models are just the same. Since they are both on the black type editions, you only see hour, minutes, and seconds. Whereas if you pick out other color variants, you'll see more. For example, this uh, Marashi version, you'll see the Arabic numerals. If you pick up the basics version, all of the uh, indices will glow in the dark as well. Next thing is LCD screen. Both of them use dotted matrix LCD, but you guys can already see now, right? This one has better contrast in comparison to this one. And I'm guessing this one has different refresh rate in comparison to this one as well. Which means this one will give you better display in comparison to this. However, the size for this LCD is bigger than this. So there's a plus and there's down on both sides. Next, the hands. The hands on both models looks pretty much the same. Hour, minutes and seconds. However, this GGB100 has a much more quicker response hands. Check this out. Each time I press mode, you can see that the second hand will move much more quicker in comparison to this one GWG1000 where it is a lot slower. You could even see the motions. So in 2020 where everything needs to be fast, snappy, this GGB100 will get you covered, especially in the next mode, which brings us to the next point, the compass. Press this upper right buttons, boom, you'll notice that this one is a lot quicker in comparison to this GWG1000. Somehow the processor is faster. It has much more functions too, but let's not talk about that. Now, the second hand will point to no directions, and the digital display in this case will show you the bearing reading. Whereas in this case, both reading and the value for the GGB100, you're gonna need to manually swap that. And also notice that the number is bigger in comparison to this one. So that's an extra convenience. This thing has that, this one didn't have that. It is missing one thing, whereas this one didn't. So there's a plus and minus. Next mode, which is the next point, the altimeter. 
press this lower right button. So, okay, both works exactly the same way. But notice that the second hand on this watch will point to differentials, whereas on this one, also differentials. But if you were to change that, just press this button and it will change to seconds display for time keeping. Whereas on this GGB100, you cannot do that. So if you want to set it up, you're going to need to press adjust and hold it. And then you could change the differential for the hands manually like that, which is a little bit of inconvenience. So this GWG1000 is better in that way. But again, this one has much more functions. Check the review video for all the details. Next mode is back to home time being the barometer so this part works the same way as well as the altimeter because they both operate on the same atmospheric pressure sensor where this second hand could be act as the differentials or seconds counter whereas on this ggb100 cannot do that but to counter this ggb100 has a much more a larger sets of data so you could understand your environment better just helps you predict the weather a lot better but I guess that's not really important because the important part is just the recent data and that is what this DWG1000 is showing to so help you predict the weather better. Next mode is now let's cycle through all of the functions this model have first being the temperature notice that there's huge temperature difference already this GGB100 has its resin cover and I'm guessing that that affects the reading. It's gonna take a few more minutes to read the ambient room reading whereas this one could instantly read it right away and that's why it has metal on the back. So I guess there's little things but not a big deal at all. You could even calibrate this if you want it to be quick. Next mode is sunrise and sunset on this whereas on this recall because it didn't have that sunrise and sunset. Pressing mode button over here will bring you to the recall mode. Next mode for both will be stopwatch, same range, same way to use. Next mode for both will be countdown timer, preset to 10 minutes. Now, in here, if you want to set this up, press this button on this GWG1000. You're going to need to unlock this crown, which is pretty hard and time consuming. So a little bit of inconvenience there. Next mode is alarm. Both of them are just the same, five alarm without snooze, but you do have signal. Next mode is world time. So this GWG 1000 world time will limit to all the cities being listed in this ring only. Same with this one except when you pair this GGB 100 to your phone, you could have access to 300 plus cities if I'm not mistaken. So much more a sets of data for you to choose from which is better. But without the smartphone, they're pretty much the same. Next mode in this GGB 100 home time on this GWG 1000 radio control. So this is where the difference comes. This one operate on wave sensor for atomic time calibrations, whereas GGB100 will rely on the Bluetooth for your phone by pressing this connect button over here. But you're gonna need to have your phone laying around for that. If your phone is placed somewhere else, and then this won't work. However, you could say the same thing with GWG1000 as well. If you live in a city where there's a lot of tall bedding, obviously the watch cannot receive the radio signal anyway so you're gonna need to use your phone for that which is gonna take about uh, three to five minutes that's what it took me to calibrate the time but for this ggb 100 it's only gonna take you like five seconds so there's up and there's down for both models okay they both will work perfectly right now as you guys can see the time is slightly lagging so this watch was uh, synchronized using bluetooth where this one was synchronized using wave scepter and you guys could already see that it's, it's a lag already going on, even when I set it up at the same time. Next thing is a mode that no master of G model have. Something that I already talked about in the review video for this GGB100, but just in case you missed that, this GGB100 has a really cool feature that allows you to customize the mode display and all of this time or information display over here. Let's say you use day date but you don't use date and atmospheric pressure display. You could turn this off, or if you don't need digital display, just turn it off. Or say mode, if you prefer um, thermometer first, you could arrange the sequence to be thermometer first, barometer seconds, stopwatch third, timer fourth, alarm first, 
or if you don't need alarm just turn alarm off or if you don't need recall just turn it off if you don't use sunrise and sunset just turn it off you have that flexibility something that is not available on any master of g models aside from this model up to this day i'm filming this video for example if you want to access the world time you're gonna need to press all of this button all the way back to world time and that is time consuming again on this ggb100 you could set the sequence to be world time first other modes later and that is incredibly convenient something that i need to add i wish casio add that feature on this gbdh1000 because i love the notification function of this model but it was placed all the way back to the last mode meaning if i want to check or read a notification i'm gonna need to cycle all the way through all the way to the back so if i could move this to the front and the uh, training sets or anything else back that would be a lot more convenience so even this watch is perfect it is still not as perfect something that it is missing that this model have so those are all the functions the good and the bad for both models i hope you understand what you are missing what you are getting continuing to the fit they both fit great okay but this one is heavy it will affect your comfort throughout the day depending on the activity that you are using but this one is much more tougher when you wear it you could instantly feel the toughness of it whereas on this one there's slightly different you know probably because it is made out of carbon material which is tough as metal but because it is lightweight it gives us the impressions that it is not as tough there's something a psychological thing that affects us any uh watch on the market really the buttons are easy to use the fit on this in my opinion is better in comparison to this gwg1000 because i'm pretty sure this one was made to be used over a glove or a bigger size wrist whereas in this ggb100 for casual watch users only and if you have a skinnier wrist it could fit better as well because the holes was placed a little bit higher in comparison to this gwg1000 as well so this one could fit more users in comparison to this gwg1000 However, to conclude, I gotta say I like both of them. I like the fact that Casio released this and this as well. I mean, if you don't have that amount of money, you could pick this up. Good to go. And if you don't like the fact that it is not solar powered, Casio also released the GWG100, but you are missing the sensors. But just to add that though, okay, even when this watch is missing the solar panel, you could always send it to Casio for battery replacement, which is gonna cost you about 10 to 30 bucks. And they will also swap the O-ring for free, okay? This watch, this ZWG 1000 could last you 10 to 20 years without battery swap. However, can the O-ring last you that long? Keep that in mind. You're gonna need to change it up from time to time regardless. So why not just change the battery at the same time as well? The costs are roughly the same. So there's plus and there's down from both sides of this G-Shock watch. So choose your mod master wisely.